Hey my friends, welcome to our discussion of the day. Um, the video I made this morning isn't around, so I'm having to reshoot the video. It's going to be a little sloppy here, so hang, bear with me. Um, so today we're going to talk about some factors that affect friction. We did this in the lab, so i got to imagine that you have a pretty good idea of what those factors are, but let's go through them real quick. So of course the amount of force pressing down, we call that the weight. But really we should be talking about the amount of force because if I'm squeezing my two hands together like this, the friction between my hands is nothing to do with the weight of my hands, it's how hard I push. So it's just that force pressing the objects together, um, which conveniently for a horizontal surface, something sitting on it, is also the weight of the object. Um, but for anything else, it's going to be how hard they're being pushed together, and that will be important soon. So let's start calling it correctly. Instead of the weight, it's that force pressing the objects together. That's also has a special name in physics called the normal force. And we'll talk more about the normal force in the coming time. All normal means is 90 degrees. So, you know, 90 degrees there. So the force that's 90 degrees to the surface is called the normal force. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that more in the future. Don't worry about, you don't quite get that yet. And then also, of course, the types of surfaces in contact. You found that when you change the surface type that you get different amounts of friction. And that's not really surprising because some floors are slippery and some aren't. Um, wearing shoes is less slippery typically than wearing socks. So those kind of things, you put oil on the ground, it's less slippery, or it's more slippery, so that's not too big of a surprise. The one that may have surprised us is that the surface area does not affect friction. And I don't know if I got to every group, so let me quickly just explain um, why that is. So when I take this and we look at, we have a book stacked on another book, and another book, and another book. Let's say that we pull this and when we do it, we have 40 newtons of force to pull. And if we're pulling at a constant speed, of course, that means that the friction is also 40 newtons. Right? Now, if I take that same stack and I just take these top two books off, and we're assuming that I'm drawing these books identical, which I'm not going to do, when we pull them, of course, we find that we only have 20 newtons of pull. And that means only 20 newtons of friction. And I should really make this over here a little bit smaller um, and which is cool because there's only two books it's only 20 newtons it's less it's half the friction but if I these other two books I took off if I put them next to it here on the table and I pull them I also get 20 newtons and 20 newtons so each stack of two books gives me 20 newtons and if I were to put them here side by side and pull them as one big chunk, well, this stack would give me 20 newtons and this stack would give me 20 newtons for a total back up to 40 newtons and 40 newtons of friction. Right? So it doesn't matter whether they're stacked vertically. In this case, all four of them are pushing down really hard on one surface area. So it's really getting kind of ground into the table. Whereas in this case, less is pushing down on each surface area, on each book at the bottom. So it's not grinding as hard, but this one's grinding half as hard here. This one's grinding half as hard as well, and together it's a full amount of friction. So the surface area does not matter, and it's because the weight balances is out. All right, so hopefully that's, hopefully that's clear. Okay, so the coefficient of friction, this is a, a topic we came up with today. And the coefficient of friction tells you the correlation, so the strength of the relationship between how hard you push and how much friction you get out. So some things are really slippery, and even when you push really hard together, you get very little increase in friction. Whereas some things are rough and sticky, and you push harder, you get this huge change in friction, but if you push lightly, you don't get much friction. So it's a big difference. And that's what the coefficient of friction tells you. So things that a coefficient of friction that are small. Um, oh, and let's do this first, actually. So a coefficient of friction of 0.5 means that for every 20 newtons of force, 20 newtons of um, force pushing together, Oops. You get 
0.5 of that or 50% of that is going to be is going to create 50% of that number of friction. So you would get 10 newtons of friction from that. Now it's a little bit misleading because 20 newtons of this force isn't turned into 10 newtons of friction. You just happen that when you have a 0.5 coefficient of friction, it means that whatever number this is, the friction is going to be half of that. It's not that this number is being turned into it or anything. Okay. So now large coefficient of frictions, let me erase this bottom thing here, um, indicate that objects are sticky, whereas a small coefficient of friction means that objects are slippery. So if you get really small numbers on the order of 0, 0.0 something, right? That's a small coefficient of friction. A coefficient of friction of 1.0 is fairly large coefficient of friction. Erase that page. And I want to show you real quick how to solve a problem for friction. So we're looking here to see how much friction should be expected if you have, if you're pushing a 23 kilogram box along a tile floor. And we, in this case, we have to know the coefficient of friction. So we have the coefficient of friction. We have the mass of the box. I'm going to write those down here. Mass is equal to 23 kilograms. Right? Coefficient of friction, um, and we'll learn in just a second, though, is this letter called mu. It's like a really weirdy cursive U that has this, unless maybe like an M even, too, but it should look more like a U than what I have, probably, of 0 0.35. And there are no units on the coefficient of friction. It came from the slope of the graph, and it was newtons divided by newton, so it has this unitless number. All right. So we know mass, and we know here. Now, from the lab, we learned that the force of friction, capital F for force, lowercase f for friction, is equal to mu, the coefficient of friction, times the normal force. Remember, the normal force is the force pushing the two surfaces together, the amount of force. Now, in this case, we have a box, and our box is sitting on the floor, and there is a force of gravity pulling down the box, and an equal force of the floor pushing up on the box. And this force that's pushing up on the box is the normal force. It's pushing perpendicular to the surface from to the box from the surface, pushing perpendicularly. And what we're trying to figure out is if we pull this way. How much will the force of friction equal? So here's my force of friction going backwards. I'm assuming I'm moving the box in that direction. I'm pulling this way. And this is force of me. Right? And my force of me right before it moves and while moving at constant speed is equal to the total maximum friction here. And that's the number we're looking to get. Now, before we can get this, we've got to figure out the normal force. We've got to figure out how to calculate this force right here. Now, conveniently, the force of the gravity pulling down and this force are the same. So simply, all we have to do here is figure out what F sub G is. So we can rewrite this equation and say, okay, so the force of friction is equal to that coefficient number, the 0.35 number, times the F sub G, because these two are equal, now we know F sub G has this equation. F sub G is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So I can plug that in. So force of friction is equal to mu times the mass times the gravity. And at this point, I know this. I know this is that 9.8 or the 10 number. The mass is the 23 kilograms and mu is 0 0.35. So I can come down here and say, okay, so the force of friction is equal to mu 0 0.35 times the mass 23 kilograms times and because we're using this you know on a worksheet or something I'm gonna go ahead and be sloppy and use that 10 number 10 meters per second per second notice when I multiply this together I'm gonna to get kilogram meter per second per second which is a, a Newton right so my force of friction will be in Newtons now a third of this is roughly seven-ish times this seventy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna guess here that the force of friction is on the order of seventy-one newtons. I don't have a calculator handy, um, but it is. I'm gonna do this. How about I do it approximately like that? Okay. So basically, what you do is start with this equation. You calculate the um, normal force, which in this case is equal to the weight of the box. You put that mg in there. 
and you just do the math. That's what you expect. So if you pull with 71 newtons and you, you get it going first and pull with 71 newtons, you get this. Now these coefficients of friction we're working with are typically of sliding friction and not of static. So actually to get it started, you're going to have to give it a tug bigger than this um, to get over static friction and then get it sliding. And then once it's sliding, 71 newtons keeps it sliding. All right. Let's clear this off. Let's take that one more thing. So let me wrap here that we had we had a 71 newtons of a force of friction. Right. The question now is how much will the box accelerate if you push with a force of 110 newtons? Well, we know that the force of friction is 71 newtons. And we know that the force of me is equal to 110 newtons in this problem. And we also know that the mass of the same box is 23 kilograms. So let's take a look. I'm going to erase this over here. So I'm going to draw a quick force diagram. I've got my box here again on the floor. I've got F sub G down. I've got that normal force pushing up, and they're equal. I've got a pull of 110 newtons, and I have a friction of only 71 newtons. Right? So force of friction, and this is force of me. So the acceleration, remember, we have this equation. Acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. So our only problem now is to figure out the net force. Now, this number and this number cancel each other out. Positive push, negative push, so the vertical doesn't matter. We just got to find the net force of these two. Of course, when I take 110 minus 71, I get 2939. So I get a net force of 39 newtons. That was terrible. I get a net force of 30. Oh, let me put the net force there. I get a net force of 39, 39 newtons and whoops to the left. So when I put this in, I just say, hey, okay, so the acceleration is equal to 39 newtons divided by a mass, 23 kilograms. And if I yank this thing with 110 newtons, I pull with 110 newtons, I end up with an acceleration that looks like, I don't know, it's like the 1.7 range. And remember, newtons is really kilogram meter per second per second. Kilograms cancel, leaving meters per second per second, meters per second per second. So my acceleration is 1.7 meters per second per second to the left. So three equations we use today. We use the acceleration equals F net equals M. We use the force of gravity is mass times acceleration of gravity, so your weight is equal to mg. And we used our new equation that the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the uh, normal force. Awesome. So this equation, this equation, and this equation are going to be helpful on doing your stuff tonight. Best of luck to you.